All right, buddy. Okay, everyone, thanks for checking in with us. Uh, I got my really good buddy, Dave Mullen. Now, you said, Dave, I was saying your name wrong. Correct me. We say Dave Mullen, but that. Oh, I mean, okay. All right. Well, I, I all right. some land. I can do some land, man. We pronounce everything wrong, right? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. And Dave is from close to Edmonton, Alberta. Very cold right now. I am in Whitby, Ontario, which is east of Toronto, Ontario. Also very cold right now. So it's winter in Canada. What can you do? So it's a perfect time to sit down and talk music with a with a fellow music lover. And today's topic is Neil Young. Now I know that. I've watched some of the my favorites on YouTube channels that have done Neil Young specials and talked about Neil Young records. I mean, this is nothing new. I mean, the only thing that's new is, for me, I love some Neil Young music. I mean, I love Harvest, and we'll talk about some of the things I like too, but I'm a novice in terms of knowledge about Neil Young compared to some people like my friend Dave, who's a real big. Is Neil your favorite artist, Dave? I think he is, right? Number one, number one of all time. Number one, baby. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, it's funny for me. I mean, I grew up Van Halen, ACDC, Maiden. You know, so I knew about Neil Young, but his kind of branch of music kind of escaped me a little bit as I've gotten older wiser <laughs> more intellectual about music um you know he's fascinating me to be honest with you i've i've heard lots of neil over the years on q107 radio station in toronto some specials about him so i know enough about him and i know his some of the stuff but still the guy's got an incredible career of music to draw from and i was curious about it so that's why i reached out to dave and said hey let's do another video but this time we're going to focus on one artist and that's your guy. So I'm going to pass it over to Dave. We're going to talk. I, I did send you Dave some questions that I'll ask yeah. you about how to highlight some things, but let's, let's hear your first impressions and talk about Neil and why, like why he's your guy, what, what's going on. Here. You know, I, I, I thought about it over the years, you know, like I think what it really was for me, was uh when i was a kid like when i okay so i was born in 1979 so when i was a kid like in the kind of 1988 uh, time frame like you know kind of 10 years old so you're five years old. younger than me my friend five years <laughs> i'm 45 in a couple of weeks uh um, i'll be so i'll be i'll be 58 in less than two weeks uh 58 years now right yeah uh, so like so at the time is when Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young used to be on the radio. And we used to listen to AM radio in the car with our mom and dad. And, like, we used to have a commute for school, 20-minute drive, and uh, we used to listen to AM radio. So my earliest, like, linking memory to, like, Neil's music is through Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young when they had American Dream. Okay. And that was, like, yeah. like I said, around 10 years old. And then I always, like remember his voice like and i mean this is mixed in with other music of the era you know a little bit of tom petty and a little bit of uh, uh don henley and different things used to come on that kind of radio right so anyway uh i think overall once i got into my teen years and started to buy albums it got into you know brian alf def leppard and you know good music mm -hmm. good rock and stuff like that and uh i like many kids was in columbia house record club right <laughs> yeah. and uh, i remember that one of the albums that came as the monthly thing was uh you know the automated thing was yep. uh harp moon so oh, okay I, yeah. and the, so it was in our collection in our house right so i started listening to harvest moon and you know when i really originally listened to the album i just i don't know just instantaneously hooked with me like it just that like You'll know what I say when I say, but you can listen to a thousand bands, but just sometimes something just clicks, right? Yeah, for and sure. It's like inside your head, like you understand it, you understand the lyrics, you understand the music, right? And at the time, I I didn't play any instruments. I was taking some piano lessons and stuff, but I didn't 
learn how to play guitar and stuff until I was like 15. So it was like mainly because of Nirvana and stuff like that. But right at that time frame is when stuff like uh, Sweets with Angels, Mirrorball, like these kind of albums yeah. were at the mid nineties. And wow, man, like they're super hard hitters, right? So he was making some really great, crazy horse music at that time. And, uh, you know, then the mirror ball with Pearl Jam. And I mean, every kid, 15, 16, we all listen to Pearl Jam, Nirvana, this kind of music. So Neil was on the cutting edge at, with a backing band with Pearl Jam. So just morph all of that into one little segment, I guess. But that, that really propelled me to listen to one big beat, man, listen to more. And, you know, so we bought those albums, new, like, uh, Sleep with Angels and Nerdball and everything subsequently after, right? Broken Arrow, those kind of things. So those were like staple 90s albums, right? Then as I got kind of into, you know, 18, 19 kind of years, started reading books about Neil Young and his history and his life. And then also started to go backwards. So um, I know that one of, and I'm going to jump ahead of myself and say, you know, one of my questions uh uh, or one of the questions you had, sorry, was yeah, I had uh, like five questions to ask you. Yeah, was it five? Yeah, yeah. yeah. one of one of the, one of the questions was about uh, greatest hits albums and stuff like that. So I'm going to get to that in a few minutes. So I'll talk a little bit about that later. But it was the, one of the greatest hits albums that really reeled me in to understand the magnitude of the catalog. So I'll I'll, I'll end it right there. So we'll yeah. go ahead with your questions. Is it and, this one uh, here? Is it that one? Uh, no, no. no? The album in question that I'm talking about is right here. It's a uh, decade. Are you talking about decade? Yes. Yeah. I don't have that one, Dave. Right here. Yeah, I don't have that one. I have this other one. I have that. I have this one. That one there. You oh, know. The greatest hit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is fantastic. Oh, yeah. Is, is, is decade deeper than this one for some reason or... Like yes. this has got a lot of his stuff on, right? Yes. Yeah. So what what decade is doing here is uh, it 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 starts off with uh, Buffalo Springfield, okay. and then it cuts in Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, and the original Crazy Horse uh, material, and then like uh, Cinnamon Girl, Cowboy Old Fan, that kind of stuff, and it goes into the seventies, right to basically the nineteen seventy seven. So it starts from the beginning of the 60s, right? The you know 77 yep. time frame. Okay. And the one you have there is um, is a newer one from Yeah, I've the, had it a long time, man. Like a long time. Yeah. So it's that one's got, cool. some, that got one, some newer man. songs. Harvest Moon is on there. And, yeah, it's, uh, Rock yeah, it's got uh, it's got your classics, Harvest Moon ends the album. Down by the river starts the album. Yes, it's got all yeah, this pretty, like really good stuff. Southern man, Ohio, the Neil damage done, all that really stuff that most uh, radio FM radio kids like me recognized. You know what I mean? So, but uh, right. maybe maybe it doesn't have some of the cool deeper cuts that maybe you can find elsewhere. I don't I don't know. You know, I yeah, I'm, like, I'm going to show you as we march along. So that's piece one in my whole collection i only have four neil young pieces but they're pretty classic neil young pieces so except for one which is kind of an obscure one i don't even but we'll get to it so <laughs> okay we'll get there so we'll so, is, so is that your favorite greatest hits collection decade is that do you prefer that one well it's funny because i'll take this out again while i'm talking here um so I originally had this CD, and I uh, I bought this vinyl probably twenty years ago, and uh, I don't know if there's a reflection on there. But, That's okay. Uh, yeah, I, I see it. Yeah. Um, this there's compilation. A whole, there's a whole. There's a whole uh, sort of slowness about your side of the video. I don't know why. Who cares? It doesn't matter. Your uh, the verbal part of your video is perfect though, so it's all good. Yeah. Okay. So, so this album right here is one of those like in a different like music groups and stuff in the different discussions and stuff. Yeah. A lot of people always ask like, "Where do I start with Neil Young? What you know, where where's a good yeah. starting point?" I always say like this: 
Yeah, like that's my default answer for everything is, is uh, decade. The reason why is because it's just like I mentioned earlier, it covers all the yeah. cross section of all the bands that he was involved with yeah. originally. Sure. Like Buffalo. So you hear the original roots of his music and how he evolved. Mm-hmm. And then Crazy Horse and also Soul Material. And this covers, you know, the it glosses over the bulk of of the 70s era where he, he made probably the most fame, right? And the most notoriety and stuff. So I would say, like, you know, I jokingly say if an alien came from outer space and said, I want to hear a Neil Young album, this is when you give them right here. This okay. Is, this is yeah. Three stars, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I will say that, but uh, uh, about two years ago, there was another album that came out. It was called uh, uh, Neil Young Crazy Horse Way Down the Box Pocket. So if I could even get this out of the thing here, this one. Okay. I've seen the cover before. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a four LP box set. And I would say that uh, that is a good subsequent uh, part two of Decade because if you said, ah, I don't really like his acoustic solo material, but I'd like to have some of the horse, this has everything you need by a crazy horse. Like all the definitive songs and it's all live, is all one big club show from 1990. It was actually the first show that they debuted the songs from Ragged Glory live. Okay. So it was yeah. a small club in California. But this one here really hits the mark, man. Like this this really gives you the essence of what that band's all about. And neat. Cool. And he, this even the recording predates even the stuff like uh Sleep with Angels and the mid nineties material. Like this is the, the early nineties. So you got like seventies and early nineties material inside of this. So this is special, man. <laughs> like, this is a really, really definitive box. Like that. You That's have pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. It's it's ten out of ten. Like it's so good. So what do you pre- like? What do you prefer better, Dave? The crazy horse kind of ragged, rocking kind of stuff, or his acoustic numbers? What do you like better? I know what I like better. Um, all, but how? I- I, I've seen him nine times live. I've seen about. Oh my half word! Time. I was going to ask you that. How many times you've seen him? Yeah, nine times. Yeah. Oh my god! Nine. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I seen about like half, half crazy horse and half solo. So to me, they both have they both have a different meaning and a different feel. Yeah. Um, you know, some songs are meant to be piano and or acoustic guitar, harmonica based, but. Uh, I I I gotta tell you the truth, man. Like I had a few moments live, and I was thinking about earlier, like you know, what's some standout moments, man? But you know, like just being up front, front row, and a couple rows back, like seeing real crazy horse play uh, Cortez the Killer and playing some of those really tough songs like Danger Bird and things like that from like the Zoom album, which is late seventies. I when when you're right up in the front row. And you watch these guys, you know, like I, I had this really core memory. I was in Saskatoon for Crazy Horse, and I was up in the front row on the rail. And when they played Cortez, you know, Billy Telwop was staring right in my eyes, man. Like, it, it's just, you get that look in this guy's eyes. And these guys are like, well, 80, they're 80 years old and stuff now. So, I mean, they're going to probably do another tour this summer. And you got these 80 year olds up there probably playing this material that's been with them in their lives like 50 yeah. years. Yeah, when they when they when they start pounding out some of these hard electric songs, there's a look in their eyes, man. Like it, it overtakes them. Like they, it, yeah. it flows so much. Like they just go with the flow and the song. So that's just, a good, just so that's cool. a good ent- that's a good entry to the next question that I had on my list, man. <laughs> What's your you favorite live recording from Neil? Um, maybe slightly biased when i say this but uh so a couple of years ago we recorded an album called why slightly uh, biased do you have it signed <laughs> no no uh this this album right here is colorado yeah so colorado actually there's a song on here it's on uh the first album here but it's green is blue 
And that that track here on this album is recorded live at one of the shows I attended. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. I was actually in the, I was in the crowd for that recording. So yeah. so that's a great song. I remember I remember I like I was sitting four rows away, right in front of him when he played that on the piano, and I, I was looking right at him. And I remember in that moment thinking like, "Wow, this is such a great song." Like, he's getting up there in age and like his his writing is so mature like he, he really just had a had a point to say in the song and uh yeah like it was one of those moments where it's like wow like i, I didn't realize at the time that it was being recorded for this but um yeah i'd say i'm a little biased in that regard that hey i'm there right. but i i remember it like thinking like man right yeah. in that moment like that's such a well-written song it's gorgeous cool. right so yeah. <laughs> I, um, I have, uh, as as I say, I don't have many, but this is my favorite Neil live, only because this is the one I know and it's the one I I have, and there's a story behind it. But it's uh, this one here, live Rust, fantastic. Wow. And what's cool about this one, Dave, is that I've said it before on the on the on the chant or on on the channel, I believe. But this is so when my uncle passed away a couple of years ago now. I rescued some stuff from his collection and this was part of that. And it, it's the prized piece from his collection. I couldn't believe it was in there and talk about pristine condition, like pristine, unbelievable. So I was really happy to have this from that collection. And uh, I'm sure it was played. It was opened, but not much. And it's fantastic. That first record, the acoustic part of it, but that's why I'm a big fan of Neil's more, acoustic numbers i think it's it just shows such heart and vulnerability i just think it's cool his stuff so have you seen neil young live no i've never seen him live no i don't know okay. if i i'm i don't know if i'll get the chance because now of course at his senior age and his legendary status you know it'd be a hard to get a ticket and imagine the price however um I would still seek it out. If if the opportunity presented itself, I would go out of my way, obviously. So so the, the normal format of his live shows, if he has some form of crazy chorus in the backing band in the live format, is that he does the acoustic set first and then the band comes out and they do the second half Amazing. kind of with the band. So, so the format of live Rust really follows like a format that he's followed throughout the career. And uh, that, that's interesting you said that because I always think of that album as more of a definitive recording when it comes to like just the longevity of the format. Okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It, it gives a guy like you kind of both pieces of the pie, right? You get the acoustic yeah. show, but sure. you get the electric show. Yeah. So, yeah. So that that's uh, that's a great album and uh, complete barn burn. Oh, yeah. my amazing yeah. yeah so on my list of questions i'll ask you this is a hard thing for you to answer because you're such a big fan but what is your favorite and here's the uh, when i thought of this question i liked it because the question is what's your favorite neil young piece in your collection which may not be your favorite album necessarily it's just the one piece that you're like oh my god i got it you know right here right here right here Wow, that's a big boy. Wow. The infamous Green Dell. Right there. Yeah. That's uh four LP plus a seven inch. There's a green seven inch in there. Um there's only that one pressing of that. Uh it's a concept album, and there's a lot of artwork. There's a there's a supplement book that comes not with it, but like part of the whole series of the shows and stuff. And uh, I don't have the book, but uh, the illustrations on the artwork were really great for this album. Where did you get and that also, from? I bought this used like about two years ago at a local shop here in town. And uh, this this is a very expensive box set. I mean, there's only been one pressing. I really highly doubt it more will be press of this. Um, that's definitely a, a good one in the collection. I know a lot of people kind of drool having this one and i know some of the guys in some of these record groups that we're in have yeah. copies of but some guys really wanted as well um 
I mean, we, we can sit here and argue all day. Like, is it, it Neil's greatest album? I don't know. Probably not. But there's some knockout writing on this map. Be the Rain, the final song, Be the Rain up here is one of, I think, one of the best songs he's ever written ever. Really? Wow. So that's just my opinion, right? Yeah. But uh, I think that uh, this is special. This is the studio recording, but there's also the box set that I have is the live show uh, wow. that was recorded in Toronto. So like the, the 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 other box set has the live uh, theatrical version of this live, plus the Blu-ray and the CD versions as well. So it uh, it was a special thing. It was a special tour that Crazy Force did just for this one conceptual album, and uh, yeah, it's I I think it's acquired taste, but it just depends on how artistic you kind of want to go with it, right? It's it's very artistic and very thought out, and there's a full like movie film that accompanies it too. So it's a lot of acting, a lot of his friends, a lot of his band and crew and everybody's included. Even even kids are in there from his daughter's school and stuff like that. Like it's all encompassing of people that he knows in his life and stuff like that. So it's it's cool. Like this this is a cool box set. The guy's so, uh, the guy's got he's an interesting person obviously i try i tried dave a while back um he had a book and i tried to read his book and it was all the book was not about music the book was about his fascination with um alternative um combustion for cars right it was, i can't remember the name of the book but it was really like really deep for that subject so he's obviously a person that he just you know, he just goes with his with his interest and dives right in. I mean, the guy's very cool that way. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I always say that you don't have to agree with his opinions, but he his convictions are so strong about what he yes. believes in that yep. he he's willing to stand for what he believes in. He's always set up for what he, he personally believes in that his freedom of speech, right? So <laughs> you gotta commend the guy for that, right? Like he's gotta be really staunch on what he believes in to just uh, stick to some of these themes, right? So another so, question I had for you, and we're gonna get to this question, but I wanted to show you because this is like this is no cutting edge comment or anything like that. However, I have had it in my so you gotta understand, as I've mentioned, I grew up a real kind of metal guy and hard rock guy. And it's only in later years that I've started to really, you know, expand my taste and stuff. But for some reason, and I don't even know, man, it's been in my collection a long time, but this is the Neil Young record that I've always had. And I just freaking love it to this day. It's my favorite. Now I haven't been exposed to a couple of the big records from his collection i'm going to be honest about that but this to me is still the shining moment and i know the most popular probably of his career correct yes arguably probably the most popular famous studio album yes for sure yeah 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 so that leads into my question to you one of the five was tell me what are the three essential neil young records that a person should have that likes to pretend to be a collector of great music Ooh. <laughs> well and i know he's made a lot so but the three is three you know the default answer here would be i think if you're a casual fan i i think that it's going to be harvest harvest right yeah, yeah. i think the second one is going to be After, After the gold, gold rush. rush, yeah, okay, yeah. I th I think then I would say Harvest Moon. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. But, and the reason the reason why I, I I say it like that is you got some of the core popular writing that hooks in the casual fan. Yeah, uh, the longevity of those albums and the classic nature of those albums have really, like, stood the test of time. Right, Harvest Moon is like a 
really nice supplementary piece to harvest. I'd know, love to get that because I I think that for me, because I love harvest a lot, I think the harvest moon seems like a, a next choice for me, for him. Yes, I, it's like yeah. a version 2.0, basically. Yeah, you yeah I should get that. that way. His writing with like uh, the acoustic and the piano type of bass music and banjo and things like that, like the acoustic side of it is very similar. Um, <laughs> real answer, though, <laughs> if you want to go like next step, like really deep, I would just personally say, in my opinion, and this is something that I like to talk about a lot, um, right here, I would say time uh, fades away. Is, time fades away. This is the new 50th anniversary reissue, but I I think time fades away, and I'll explain this in the blurb here in a second. So time fades away, and then the next album in the setup here is, and you see the sign version here is on, on the beach. beach. Yeah, right. And the next one in order is. Tonight's the night. Oh, really? Okay. Huh. And like after that, you're getting into Zuma, which is right here, which is Crazy Horse album. So, okay. So, for what people don't understand about his music, was Harvest made him really famous. Crosby Stills, Nash and Young, Ruffles, Sprinkle, uh, After the Gold Rush, Harvest made him really famous. After he had some moments to reflect on the fame, he kind of went completely left field. And there were some challenges in his life. Like he moved into a new property. He had a house burned down in the 70s, had his first child, had a marriage, had a divorce, had some drug habits, changed band members, uh, had some kind of bad chores. Uh, so what happens with the, the live recording of Time Fades Away. Time Fades Away is the Harvest tour that he did after the album was released. And he did all new material and all new songs that weren't on Harvest as a kind of stick back to the record company to say, hey, I, I'm Neil Young, I do what I want. So there's something that's like off the grid with that. And this is something I was explaining to other friends recently. It's like, if you think about, you know, punk rock ethic and just how an artist really shines. It's like sometimes the darkest moments is when the true artistry really gets revealed, right? So some of the darker writing or in these recordings, that body of work, those four albums that we've always known as four are referred to as the ditch. So the ditch is the time period where, you know, he had some issues in his life and everything was going down, 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 down. And he created some of the most greatest material of his writing career right amazing and, yeah uh, it's just to me that body of work in that short time frame is that's all you need man. really <laughs> eh? wow oh, that's okay. cool yeah. yeah those albums now subsequently what's happened since there's a couple albums like um he's come out in the archives and released uh this one hitchhiker which was recorded during the sessions of the ditch. And the other one is um, um, Homegrown. Okay. Yeah. So all, if you take these albums that were released in the last four or five years and put them in the middle of those other albums, they all fit together. It's like a big puzzle, right? Like he recorded all these songs in the middle of that time frame. And one of the newer releases here as well which is Chrome Dreams, yep. is also is recorded in the ditch. So you got these albums, and then some of the live albums like Tuscaloosa, Tuscaloosa and um, a couple other live ones that he released in the Archive series and Blue Lake series are recorded in the ditch era as well. So there's a lot of music to discover when it comes to the studio albums plus the live albums. But I think that that time period of, of recording and writing and playing is the best creative time, in my opinion, that he's released music. So Wow. Amazing. But like, I got to say, I've watched a bunch of videos, as I said, uh, from other sources and, and been fun and great sources and stuff. 
But what I love about your knowledge, Dave, and what you're showing here today is a depth of the layering of his catalog that a lot of people don't either own or know as well. And to me, that's because like, how to describe it? Like he's a very famous artist and he's got certain benchmarks that he's created, but in between is gold. You just yes. got to be willing to spend the time and energy to, to commit to it as much as the artist did to create it when maybe they weren't as popular of the moment. Do you know what I mean? So that to me is fascinating to me. I, th those are the albums to get. Like for me, because yes. if I had a bigger budget, those would be albums I'd chase. But for me, uh, with my Neil Young collection, you know, I'm still working on building <laughs> the framework. You know what I mean? But really the good stuff is in between the framework to me. It's the right, hidden right. goal, so, right? So to go back on it, like those first three albums, the Harvest, Harvest Moon and Africa Gold Rush, those are the standard ones you're going to find in yeah. collections have, you know, like, like a basic and understanding. It's good stuff, just, obviously, yeah. Excellent, excellent, excellent material. But uh, once you take the deep dive, yeah. I, I challenge people to take the deep dive and go into the ditch. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and you, you can hear some of the issues and some pain and some of the confusion in the lyrics. And, and it, it really uh, puts a human aspect to, like, you can almost touch it. It's right there. Like, it, it yeah. makes you feel like he felt, like, yeah, in his writing, and that's what's always been important to me. You know, mm -hmm. like, is mm -hmm. is it the, the raw vulnerability is is what makes a songwriter sometimes uh, great and makes them shine, right? Yeah. So here's another question for our five that I was throwing at you here. Um, <laughs> tough for you because you've got so much amazing stuff, but are there grails still to be had? Do you have two or three grails to come for Neil, or what? So. This right here to about right here, it, I don't think you can see that to about right here, is Buffalo Springfield, uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Like, everything's in chronological order, right? So in here, I'm missing about 12 studio albums and a couple of live ones. Sorry, 12 total, but there's a couple of uh, live ones in there. Um, I, I, like, really, really, really want uh, Dream of Man 9 2, which is basically the live version of Harvest Moon. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it, it's it's exactly Harvest Moon, just every single song is cut live. I, I think it's from different shows. I don't think it's one show. And yeah. I think the order, if I remember from the CD, the order has changed. But the, like, the songs are the same. And um, it's just a live version. So it just... It just it captures every song live. So is that one pressed on? Is it pressed on vinyl? It is. It's like a four hundred dollar right now. Uh, yeah, I I I bought it once and I gifted it to somebody, and uh, I don't regret that obviously. But uh, yeah. I, I bought it when it was a thirty dollar album, right? <laughs> and so for me, uh, like it's like, oh, I wish I would have bought two, but I didn't. So yeah, you know, okay, all right. But it kind of just falls back into the same trap as I mentioned, right? Like, you know, those core albums, it's just a really nice listen, you know? So I think for me, um, as I said, mine's nothing compared to you, but um, I definitely want to get Harvest Moon and I yes. want to get After the Gold Rush. Those are the two Neil Young records I want to add to my collection. Um, the yeah. only other Neil Young piece that I have, and I've had it on CD, I can't. I guess I just like the song, so that's why I bought it, because I used to buy a lot of CDs, not not as much, but still now. And I don't know where it fits, even in his catalog. You'll tell me. I don't think it's yeah. brand new. It's older, but it's uh, an album called Prairie Wind. Oh, yeah. I, it's Ooh, really yeah. good. I like it. Yeah, yes. it's, it's kind of like this very mature, chill, kind of calm record. It's very nice. I, don't, I think I like the song. That's why I got it. I mean, I think if I'm not mistaken, that's him and his sister. I, I don't know though. Maybe it's not. Yeah, I don't know. on the back. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I don't know where in. that fits in his catalog, but I've got for some reason that's a, a weird one that I have in my catalog. So <laughs> it, it, it fits in about right here, but there's a oh, gaping yeah. 
there's a gaping hole because it does it's not in my collection yet. Oh, That's wow. what I need. <laughs> okay. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So that album actually is a is a nice addition to Harvest and Harvest Moon as well. It's a nice acoustic bass record. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you can remember, but right around that time frame, he did a live show at the Ryman Auditorium. If you don't know it, just look it up in Netflix and stuff, or or any streaming services is online. Yeah. Um, but Neil Young, Heart of Gold, it's a, a live show. And uh, it features his acoustic band, plus uh, Emily Lou Harris is in there. And it's all it's all filmed by the Ryman, but some of the songs from that album are in there. But it's from kind of around that time frame, kind of mm-hmm. mid two thousands, like two thousand four, five, five yeah. or so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what I was going to say about that is, ironically, it was right after that album when I seen them live, oh, first yeah. time, first time. Oh, yeah. So, um, so it was right after it was right after Greendale and stuff is when he had the brain aneurysm, and that first time he performed back live was the Live Eight show in Barrie, Ontario, when he got off on Canada Day. Remember that one? The Live Eight came on TV. Yeah, yeah. So he got up on stage. I remember watching on TV and Ford Downey's up there and uh, Buck Cherry's up there, Josh Todd, and they're all singing "Rock in the Free World" and. Uh, and they had uh, Gordon Lightfoot was up there. Like everybody was there, right? Like it was awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so just a lot of camaraderie in the biz, right? And just you know paying ultimate respect to him on stage, and he's there. You know he's with them on stage, so that was pretty cool. Big collect, you know, collection of artists up there at the same time. But um, when that album came out, uh, Prairie Wind, um, that was his studio album. And then he went out on tour. Well, he released Chrome Dreams 2 around that time frame too, right after it. And uh, it, it was also an album that had a lot of Crazy Horse material. So I went to, because I always said, like, when he comes back from the aneurysm, when he plays tours, I'm going to go to show one. Show one was in Boise, Idaho. Show two was in Spokane. So I was like, hey, Spokane is drivable, right? Well, they're both drivable. So I jumped in the car with Lisa and my buddy Chris, and we drove to Spokane and seen him in no Spokane. Way. So that was the first time we'd seen him. So what's ironic about that was before I was waiting to go into the show, I parked across the street from the venue, and Rick Rose is the basis of uh, – he plays on that album. Uh, Rick, the bass player, he also plays bass on uh, Rockin' in the Free World and – some of these tracks all the time, like he's in a lot of the Neil recordings, right? So he walked across the parking lot. So I jumped in the car. Hey, Rick, how's it going? You know, I had a big chat with Rick, and that that was awesome. That was the only one yeah. time I met him off stage. But uh, anyways, uh, it was a thrill, man. Like I just I feel really honored that I met him, and he actually signed that album on the inside. So I got the Rick Rose's uh, really? album signed. Hey, yeah. right? uh, that's a special one for me. Man. That's it's a great yeah. album. So my last question for you on our five was, and this is tough. This is tough. Come on. Oh, oh. <laughs> Very tough. But your favorite Neil Young song and why? Tough question to ask. Someone with all this music. Come on. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I I, I, I referenced Be the Brain from Green Dome. I, I think that's one of the greatest songs they wrote. I think uh, Harvest Moon. Uh, oh, I was going to say, for me, I'd say Harvest Moon. Yeah. 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 Or Heart, of, a, or Heart of Gold. Yeah, Heart of Gold as well. I mean, Heart of Gold to me is one of those staple songs that made me learn how to play harmonica and really want to deep dive yeah. into like learn how to play more of his songs on guitar, things like that. But there's a song actually called War of Man. It's on. Uh, on Harvest Moon, and I think that's one of his best songs of all time. Uh, it took me nine shows to see it live. Uh, it was in it was in show nine where he uh, played that it was February fourth, twenty nineteen. It was the same show he recorded Green is Blue. It was Winnipeg Centennial Hall, uh, February fourth, twenty nineteen, and uh, it's one of those songs he doesn't play live very often, hardly ever, and. He played that. It was like it blew me away. Like, whoa! Like he he in that show he did Danger Bird, Cortez the Killer, 
and War of Man in that one show. <laughs> That's like a unicorn show, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and like, a, and like a hur- he did like a hurricane at the end. So like, what, like, I don't know. I'm speechless, man. Like it just, that just blew me away, right? So you but, you uh, showed you showed on the beach is signed. Is that signed by Neil? Yes, it is. So so to answer the question, how did that? Happen? I th- I know you probably showed. Remember when we had our autograph session, right? Yes. But that's pretty incredible, right? Yes. Yeah, so that one was re- uh, signed on February third, twenty nineteen, at the Burton Cummings uh, Hall there in Winnipeg. So he played two shows in Winnipeg, but he switched venues one night to the next night. So this was my fortieth birthday show. So this is my favorite Neil Young album, and my favorite song is on the beach the title track of this album so of course on my 40th birthday when i met him i got him to sign this album in winnipeg and, and ironically in minus 50 so it's, it feels quite like it does today right like, and what and was your my, what, tell me the truth as a man like tell me the truth like what was your impression of neil like when you were person to person with was it did you have any impression of him I, I met him previously in 2010, and uh, he'll he'll sign for everybody like that's waiting by the bus or whatever. Like he he's pretty gracious about it. Like he'll he'll grab a pen and go down the line. Sometimes he he doesn't say much, and sometimes he'll say something. I don't know. <laughs> the first day uh, I when I talked to him, it was my birthday, so he wished me happy birthday. So that was cool. <laughs> so I got that yeah. out. And uh, the second day, like the next day when I got on the sign, he seen me and he's like, oh, you're back for more, are you? Like, and he chuckled <laughs> at me. And like, so he did that. I like he, that. He signed yeah. me on the day before. And, and, and the second day there, he had Daryl Hannah with him. And she was kind of chuckling at him saying that. But he was all smiles that second day. He signed no problem. And he just grabbed the can and went down the line for six or seven guys waiting. But uh, <laughs> he... He doesn't break in too much chat, but usually he'll do it like if he's on the way from his bus to the sound check, sure, going into the show or something. He'll just go, oh, yeah, okay, you know, blah blah blah. So if you got something to say, so okay, being a you know. Neil Young guy like you are, like you're a real fan, do you foresee yourself seeing him again live? So the rumor mill on his archives uh, site says that. He's alluding to playing some live shows in 2024. So fingers crossed. But what I will say about that is um, I- I've told this story before to many people, but I always said to myself, like when I was younger, especially like in my teenage years, uh, I-, I always in my life wanted to see him 10 times. Like I've always wanted to see Pearl Jam 10 times. I always wanted to see Bob Dylan and Neil Young 10 times. Those are the three. So I'm on six for Bob, nine for Pearl Jam, nine for Neil. So I'm trying to like just get my numbers up the car and just I, like I gotta hit ten. I mean, if he tours again, truthfully, I, I will probably do multiple shows. Uh, one would be suffice, but anything beyond one is going to be like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. perfect, right? Well, I so, should try to get to sh- see him. I don't know. I'd love to, obviously. Yeah. It, it, it boils down now, Ron, to now, now I, and I'm going to be so picky when I say this, but I, I want to see him in Massey Hall. Oh, boy. And, Wouldn't that be special? Yeah. And if I don't see him in Massey Hall, my second choice would be Red Rocks in Colorado. Those are just dream fantasy gigs. But if he doesn't play either one of those venues, uh, you know, I have seen him in Winnipeg, which is fantastic. I've seen him in Spokane. I've seen him in Edmonton, Calgary, different places like that, in Saskatoon. But I, I, I would go anywhere. Just any if you, if you, anywhere. David, if you were to see him in Massey Hall, I would, I would just die to be there. <laughs> I would go with you, man. <laughs> That oh, would be. I would. I've not seen the new Massey Hall since they did the bank renovation. I haven't been there yet, but I. I love Massey. Obviously, it's a great place. Well, you already beat me because I've never been inside of Massey Hall. So oh, it's that fantastic. Be... I've seen some pretty great artists there, but uh, I haven't been to the new, and I hear it's really impressive. So, seeing a guy like there, like that there, wow, that would be amazing. 
Yeah. Yeah, it would be really honestly like a uniform show for me. Like it would be the number one cherry picked number one, yeah. right? Like yeah. I mean, so realistically, Ron, like if he didn't tour anymore, I mean, I'm happy with the shows I've seen. And and with saying that, like I've seen a broad spectrum of songs performed live through the whole catalog in nine shows. So I would say that I'm happy with it, but I always yeah. want the personal goal of Right? It's just a personal thing. I want to see him one more time. And, That'd be cool. Uh, yeah. Prefer preferably as close as possible. The t- his ticket prices are really high for the three years now. Yeah. Three yeah. Years yeah. So uh, I would want to see him just one more time up close. I don't and, mind. Uh, the, the, I don't mind, Dave. Nowadays, I don't mind the ticket prices climbing for artists like this that deserve it that have a like you know a career that needs to be celebrated like it's it's special do you know what i mean you know the problem nowadays of course is that every artist that's come around thinks that they're that they're not so that's the difference i i'd rather i'm really picky and because budget but also life experience and you know been to enough shows to know what ones really count do you know what i mean so you know that's so for instance neil if you were to be able to get tickets, it's not that there's no cost that wouldn't be un- unattainable. Come on, we're only regular people, but it's worth, He'd that would be worth it. It would be worth it. There would be no like fighting about the price. That's worth it. So <laughs> Right, right. And, and I think honestly, if he played, just speculation, sorry, but if he played Massey Hall, it would probably be a nice acoustic show where, you know, you could hear a pin drop, it's super quiet, like people are paying big money to see, you know, a lifetime artist perform, mm-hmm. like, you know, in like the, like, maybe it could be the final time he ever plays the venue, like, or might be the final tour, like, who knows, right? <laughs> I see, I seen a, a quote online today that somebody shared, and it was a big interview with Neil, and uh, I don't know, they were poking about the, the doing farewell tours, and Neil said, oh, yeah, you'll know when it's over, because I'll be dead. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's great. That's yeah, the only so, answer to give. That's it. Yeah. 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 So, like, and not to make light of that, but it's really funny, because look at guys like Willie Nelson and stuff up in the 90s, still playing live and stuff, man. Like, these guys... They're going to go for it as long as they can. That's who they are, though, right? That's it. Wow. So. Yeah. True artists. That's, that's, that's right. the right. right? So. <laughs> all right, buddy. Well, that was amazing to hear all your stuff and see this crazy, good, amazing, uh, in-depth collection that you have. That's what I love. I just, you know, uh, you're not just talking about the big markers. You're talking about all the good stuff in between, which I love. So, you know, I kind of Well, Ron, that. I'll say like this. It's a ever-growing, ever-evolving collection. I mean, he's releasing six or seven albums a year now. And like this end of the pile is going to get bigger as he releases more material. I got, you know, a dozen or so gaps to fill in between. And unfortunately in my in my position they're very high ticketed price albums right now a little bit out of uh personal uh financial mm-hmm. uh, realm of buying but i mean you know who knows you I just can, gotta I you just buy- gotta you, you, you same with my stuff too you just gotta be patient you pick your spots and then you know when it's the right time you just do yeah. it and it, it it happens it happens yeah yeah, I've been you know, filling out my collection. I, I'm more into the really filling out the overall, like, you know, expanding the collection overall. You know, um, I'm not a completist really to any one artist, but I I like collecting a good, like, collection of all the best artists, you know, like rock artists. So there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, before we end this, I got one thing to say, you know, something else I thought about earlier today, right, was how you've uh, showcased Oasis in your videos, and you talk about you love Oasis, right? I mean, like, I also really, really love that band, man. like, from the 90s. I mean, they were such a core staple band yeah. to me, right? But you, you could find tons of interviews and stuff with Liam and Noel, 
And uh, when they talk about, uh, and Radiohead, Tom Morf, right? Like these guys from the 90s, when we talk about like, who were you influenced by? And they just go, Neil Young. <laughs> these guys, I mean, they they love, 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 love Neil, right? And they love the ditch. They love the recording process. They love everything, right? And uh, I love how familiar Millions by Oasis, they have that Neil Young, uh, hey, hey, my, my, on there. I, yeah. I, I love that when Noel Gallagher sings that, man. It's that's a blistering version of that song. It's so yeah. Good. yeah. It's, well, I, because they're they're guys. They like the, the 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 writing of it, but they also they're rock people. It's rock music. That's what he is. He's still a rocker deep down in his heart. Yeah, he's a songwriter. I get that, but deep down, he's got that rock vibe that still pulses in him. You know what I mean? So yeah. yeah. I can only imagine being in the middle of an oasis crowd, like in in the UK, like being in the middle of Manchester, and then he grips into a Neil Young song. I mean, like that would be just like, like you'd yeah. levitate. That. Like, <laughs> which is another point. And, and sorry, it's slight rabbit hole, but sometimes people like songs by Neil Young and songs by Bob Dylan, who are recorded and sang by different artists, like like. When you hear like female vocals do Neil Young songs or Bob Dylan songs, they, they take on a whole different life. And it's it's weird, like, you know, to hear like bands like Oasis, like just just pound out like 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 that generation's music, man. I just and then they just throw in a Neil Young song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, well, I, I've said forever for me. And I, I, if someone says to me, OK, you talk about music all the time, Ron, you listen to music, blah, 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 blah. You're a rock guy. Ultimately, Dave, the, the biggest thing to me, the biggest thing that of why I like certain artists versus other artists more and blah, there's just, there's one king when it comes to listening to and being entertained by music. There's one king, and that is the songs. Bands right. that have the songs are my favorite bands. That's it. That's All the style and all the substance and all the coolness and all the whatever makes, it's all evaporates if you don't have the songs and that's what it is all about the songs to me so that's it neil's got look at that look at the songs yeah <laughs> it's a lot of songs, a a lot lot of songs, songs. man a lot of songs yeah. yeah all right david thanks again for doing this with me it's it's always fun to talk to you and well i'll come up with another idea and topic down the road i'm sure and we'll hook up again and at some point here in our in our uh, future, we'll we'll be together, and uh, maybe we'll see a show together. Wouldn't that be special? You know, whatever. <laughs> it would be fantastic. I promise we're you. Two, we're not on two different planets. We're on the same country. <laughs> That's right. I promise you, if Neil Young plays trial, I'll be there. I'll see oh, you there. Man. Yes, for sure. Take it easy, buddy. You you be good. Hey. See you later. Thanks Cheers. again.